As a runner, I'm sure you've been told that your running shoes are super important. But trust me, I know that that shoe buying experience can be super overwhelming. There are so many different choices out there. Now everyone's foot is different and their needs are different for what kind of shoe they're looking for. So no, this is not going to be a my favorite shoes that I think that you should be getting to run in kind of video. But by the end of this video, you're gonna feel much more confident trying on those shoes at home, once you order offline, or walking into the running store, putting that shoe on your foot and knowing if it's the right fit. And if those ones you have at home aren't the right fit, this is your permission from Coach Morgan to buy some new shoes. Having proper fitting running shoes is really gonna save you in the long run, literally and figuratively. It can save you from having blisters, hot spots, all around general foot pain. And if those shoes are fitting you too big, it's going to save you from tripping and injuring yourself out on their run. Before coming here, working at the Run Experience, I was actually working in sports retail. I sold a lot of running shoes. So what I'm about to tell you is all the processes that I found that worked best across the board so we can help them find the perfect fit perfect pair of running shoes. And remember, this can work even if you can't make it into a running store or you don't have one nearby. You can order shoes online and when you get those shoes in, you can follow along with what I'm about to tell you as you try on those shoes to see if they're the right fit for you. I do have one suggestion for purchasing online and that's to make sure you find a running store that's going to have a really good return policy. Some website like Running Warehouse where you can test out the shoes for 30 days. If you don't like them, they're not the right fit, you can return them. The first thing you need to do before you even get to the shoe store or before you try those shoes on is actually maybe even go for a run or try on those shoes at the end of the day. Our feet tend to swell up, especially if we're walking on them a lot all day or we've just gotten done with the run. So you wanna try on shoes when your foot is in that swollen position. You know, that shoe is gonna fit a lot less snug at the beginning of that run as opposed to the end. So if you try it on with that foot a little warmed up, you're really gonna get an accurate fit. Also, before you get to the store, make sure you're bringing your own running socks. I can't tell you how many people used to come into the store with like their super teeny, tiny socks that they would wear with their just everyday shoes. And if those are not the socks that you're gonna wear with your running shoes, then you're really not gonna know how that shoe actually feels. We may have to scale up a half a size or something like that, just so you can fit with those socks. So bring them with you to the store, I promise. We don't care what they look like, we just want you in the right shoes. Just like maybe make sure they're clean first, right? Once you're ready to try on some shoes, I want you guys to take that brand loyalty that you maybe have for one particular pair of shoes or style of shoes and just toss it out of here. Go in with an open mind and an, an open foot, as we might say, and try on a couple different brands, a couple of different styles of shoes. And try to put color preferences out of your brain when you're picking shoes, because I promise that one shoe that you really like, it's gonna fit the same in the blue color as it does the orange color. If you've never had a foot assessment done before where you walk barefoot and let one of the sales associates tell you if you need a neutral or a stability shoe, I really highly suggest doing that. If you already know, that's great. That's going to cut your options in half, taking away a little bit of the distraction. Now, I don't wanna get into too much whether you personally need that neutral shoe or that stability shoe, but if you're walking and your arches are really sinking in, you probably need a little bit more stability underneath that arch to keep you going down the straight and narrow. If your foot doesn't really turn in, doesn't really turn out, you're probably good with a neutral shoe. As to not overwhelm yourself with lots of different choices, start with three shoes to try on first. Go through them, really test them out, pick your favorite out of that one, and if you're still not 100% sold, try another two or three, and kind of just go through that process. But what really overwhelms me is trying on too many different shoes. At the end, I'm like, I have no idea how they all felt. It just kind of all blurs into one. So take it in smaller chunks at a time. A properly fitting running shoe should feel snug, not too tight, not too loose. And look, if that shoe is not comfortable once you slip it on your foot, it's not gonna get more comfortable the more that you wear it. So that immediate reaction is really key here. Now, once you have that shoe on your foot, go ahead and give that heel a little tap back and stand up to check the size. When you stand up, your foot shifts forward in the shoe, so you're gonna get a better read on if that shoe is too big or too small for you. While standing up to check the size, go ahead and we're gonna use our thumb here. 
you're gonna put your thumb and press all the way around your toes. You should have about a thumb's nail length of room in that shoe. This is probably going to equate to about a half a size to a full size larger than your everyday shoes. This allows that foot to move around a little bit inside the shoe, get that wiggle room, have those toes spread out because when we run, our toes spread out when we push down. So we need that extra space as opposed to our just regular everyday shoes. Next, you're gonna take your two fingers and put them behind, put them behind the heel of your shoe. If you can just put the two fingers, that means it's pretty snug. If there's way too much room in there, the shoe is too big. Like I said, we want that shoe to be snug. We don't want the foot being able to move around fully in that shoe. That's what causes those hot spots in those blisters. Ow. Next, and most importantly, take those shoes for not just a walk around the store, but if you have the opportunity, take a little run in them. The shoes are gonna feel so much different from walking to running because when we walk, we don't have that same stride and our foot doesn't impact the same way as it does when we're walking, right? For me personally, I'm a bit of a heel striker, which leave me alone in the comments. I know I'm a heel striker, but my foot lands underneath me and it hasn't caused me any problems. So I like a little bit more cushion there. So when I run, if it feels like my heel is, doesn't have enough protection underneath it, that shoe's not for me. So take a little jog in them, really bounce around, see how it feels underneath your foot. Really check in here with your foot to see if there's any rubbing, any pinching in weird spots, whatever you need to do to really feel like you've gotten a feel for that shoe. And yeah, you might look a little silly, but hey, you're gonna feel like Cinderella after all this. Once you've found that perfect fit, tying the shoes comes into play really huge on how that shoe is going to fit your foot. For me, I have narrower heels, so tying my shoes in a specific way actually helps a lot of that slipping. Even if the shoe is the perfect fit, sometimes I still get a little bit of that slippage. So, if you wanna know how to tie your shoes properly, go ahead and check out this video right over here that I made just for you guys. Go ahead and check that out, and happy running.